Welcome to the M2 Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Antony, my co-host, Mr. J.K. Heath, Kyle Heath. And pretty much this is the show where we do a recap of the week for technology, innovation, esports, and personalities, new and upcoming games, and gaming industry-related news. This episode, because it's the first of the month, we're going to basically break down new games to look out for for the month of February. But before we get into that, Kyle, what have you been up to? Uh, what have I been up to? You know, I talked to you a little bit before the show, like we always do, right? We always do our little, mm-hmm. like, oh, what's going on? It's like that. You mentioned that I my... I stop you. <laughs> you, <laughs> mentioned... Like, you need to save it. <laughs> you mentioned that my stream in Discord was like, or my screen share, screen share? Jeez. My screen share yeah. was a little choppy. Yes. I get this a lot when I share my screen with other people, too. It's like a common occurrence. It's got me thinking. It's got me cooking right now. Oh, great. Um, you know, with tax season and everything coming up, a little extra, a little extra cash flow, a little bit. Um, also got some, Uh-oh. you know, got some reserves too, you know. Um, new PC parts looking kind of nice, Mike. I ain't gonna lie. I'm coming off of five and a half years, and uh, my boy's PC actually has been having a lot of issues like this past week. He's like, it was like a bunch of stuff just like going wrong, and his like PC's like having issues, so. His his is a year younger than mine too, so his is like coming up on five years. Mine's coming up on six. I'm just like it gets me nervous. I'm like, oh, like you know, is that gonna be me in a couple months type thing? So, um, I don't know. I I I, sh- I, I don't know if I'm doomsday like esque or whatever, but I'm just like, dude, I, I feel like it's just it, it may be time for the upgrade soon. I don't know. I I think you've been thinking about an upgrade for so long now that you're using any bit of like any little excuse you can think of to just do Sax. it. It's just true. I'm not gonna lie. I, <laughs> I won't think deny that's it. what it might be. I won't deny it, dude. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just I, you know, I'm, a, I'm three like graphics card wise. I'm three generations behind at this point. Um, Jeez. like everything, like CPU. I'm, I don't even know how many generations at this point. I'm pretty sure I'm like five or six. I feel like <laughs> at this point. Um, so I don't know. Um, it wouldn't be too much either. I mean, the new. So I was looking at the new 4070 Ti's. Um, they start, the retail price is 800, but they're, I'm able to find some easy ones for easy, brand new ones for like 850. So it's not too much of a markup and they're aftermarket too. So it's kind of like the expected markup anyway. That's not just like, you know, the founder's edition. So, I mean, price is looking good. I don't know. Um, and the 4070 Ti would be a, be miles different and better. And I don't (laughs) know, dude. So it would be a significant upgrade. That's for sure. Yeah. To say the least. So. I mean, it's, yeah, it's relatively affordable. I mean, there's some parts I can, of course, I can reuse. Like, my RAM is relatively young. I got that only a couple of years ago. Like, all the storage I'm planning on just reusing, for the most part, may get, like, a uh, better M.2 drive for my, like, actual C drive because I only yeah, have a 250 gig C drive. Dude, I've been, I've been towing the line of 10 gigabytes free for, like, five years now. So, <laughs> like, ever since yeah, I got yeah. the thing, I feel like. So, um, yeah, that's definitely due for more space. So, I mean, I'd get that. But, I mean, Everything else is pretty much be new, but yeah, I mean, sourcing it out, it actually won't be too bad in price. So, um, for the first time in a while, I feel like it's not like crazy to get, you know, PC parts, which is awesome. So I don't know, yeah. dude, you may, you may, and plus, you know, we, we got stuff for the show we want to do at some point, you know, like some ideas and whatnot. And like, I want to have something reliable and something that I know we can like, I can deliver and I don't have to worry ever about like crashing or anything. So that's uh that's part of the reason too i mean it's not only just kind of like a oh i want to upgrade but i feel like uh, again like you said i I can come up with excuses you know so i'm just chilling (laughs) Um, whatever can make it work yeah whatever Um, makes it work but but yeah so that's that's my mind's been racing the past like week or so just like you know and then the next month next month or so maybe after uh maybe after we're in charlotte and stuff like that it'd be a good time to like reconvene my mind and be like all right it's maybe uh time to pull the trigger so yeah just keep watching the deals and try to like figure out exactly what's good for you i i think whatever you get if it's within the last like two years it's going to be a good upgrade no yeah. matter what yeah i mean cpu wise i was looking at um i was actually looking at intel's 12th gen i think it is which is you know yeah. a generation back but um but a lot of that stuff you know especially like when i'm comparing cpus to like the new ryzen nines and stuff like that like yeah. the newest Ryzen nines compared to the generation behind i7 is the i7 actually in a lot of cases outperforms if not as the exact same so which is kind of wild and it's like cheaper of course because you know competition and amd pushing so it's like it's a good price i don't know yeah i think this is probably a, 
it's probably one of the better times to get into the market in a while, at least over the last two years, because yeah. the prices are finally starting to settle down a little bit and the inventory is back up. That's yeah, true. The only problem you really got to worry about, man, is uh, if you go for those newer cards, you're going to have to make sure you have a good enough power supply. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's the thing, possibly yeah. a new case. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I was looking into, um, funny enough, especially if I get a new card, I'm definitely going to look into getting like a vertical bracket so I can just like okay. mount it down so it's not like sagging and stuff. Um, I feel like that's going to be Good a idea. must with these 40 series. So <laughs> I've been looking into that. They're relatively inexpensive. I think the ones that were, ones I was looking at, I looked at a Fantex one that was like 60, 70 bucks, but I saw it in a lot of like builds like online and stuff like that. And people liked it. So probably something like that would be what I'd go with. But I've been doing my research. So see how it fades out. I hope you find a I hope you find a good deal. I know probably my next build is going to be a custom water cooled loop, just because yeah. those new graphic cards are so big. I would want to take it all apart and just like at that point, get get like a nice case, make it show it off, and take some time and energy and kind of treat it like a project, you know? Yeah, for sure. Nice I'd love to do. Sesh. I think I'd love to do something like that in the future, like in the mm -hmm. you know distant future, because like I don't know, like right now, it, you know me. I can't even clean my PC every year. So like you, fact, you expect me to have a, so like so like <laughs> you expect me to like try and do a custom no loop right now? No shot. So yeah, no shot. Well, in some I can't give you any, at least for now. I can't give you any crap like about cleaning because I know for a fact there's a lot of dust on the front of my PC right now. It's, I haven't cleaned it in a while. Yeah. I usually clean it. Like it seems like once or once every two months, yeah. which is more than most people. But I've been I don't think I've touched it in like three three or four. <laughs> So. Yeah, when you that's definitely more than most people I'd say. Um yeah, it's um Yeah, I mean, I don't know, so I've, you know, I've been looking a lot at that, but I mean, <clears throat> um other than that, I mean, this past week, uh I got some more smite in with the boys. I'm back on the smite grind with the new season. I'm really Very enjoying nice. the new season, so um playing some more of that. Having some fun there. Um and game-wise, I don't think there's too much else. Uh I did watch episode 3 of Last of Us. I assumed you watched it oh, too. Yeah. Oh, of course. So good, man. very emotional episode. It was so good, though. Um, yeah, people weren't lying when they said, you know, it was a very brilliant piece of TV because, yeah, that was uh, it, it's it's so crazy. Like, I almost like halfway through it, I, I forgot I was watching Last of Us. I was like, what? Like, I, I thought I was just watching oh, yeah. like you know, a blockbuster like movie. I'm like, what is this? So, like, um, but yeah, and then you know, towards the end, I was like, oh, yeah, like I was starting to rope back in, I'm like, okay, yeah, we're in this universe, but but yeah, the way they did that, um. The way they did it, it just like it made it seem like it was a whole different show. I think it was a perfect fit. Um, it added a lot of depth to the character of Bill. Yeah. And then gave, a, like, basically a screen appearance of Frank. Yeah. It's really cool. Big yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, the end, you know, I, I can appreciate them trying to veer off in, like, different directions, especially stuff that's probably more TV-friendly and stuff that would probably garner a larger audience. But I think it's yeah. done well. Like, it's not, like, it's it's not poorly executed, so, I don't know, it works. I enjoy it. I think they're doing it right. Yeah, I, I feel like that's fair. It's definitely, like, um, intentional, probably, is the best way to describe it. Yeah. It, it seemed like it had, it built on to the overall story in a way that, like, added to it and, that, like, gave way more depth to characters and built a relationship and, like, made sure everybody was connected. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah, dude, like... Because when I was watching, I was thinking after, I was like, if they just, if they did the one for one to how you met Bill in the game, in the show, it just wouldn't yeah. have been the same. Like, I, I just, I don't no, think it would have worked. Weird. Like, it really, yeah. I don't think it would have worked. So it was definitely the right move on the director to say like, hey, let's, let's take a different direction, and try and expand upon something. So it's just 10 out of 10, bro. I don't know how else to say it. It's so good. If you haven't seen Last of Us, you got to go watch it. It's fantastic. Facts. Can't say enough. Uh, know. you play any games at all or you just you said you got background smite yeah you know back on smite um uh, i don't think i played anything else this week i've been so bad about games lately but you know is what it is yeah. doing stuff what about you though mike i know you've been playing a lot of games dude i've been you probably see me streaming now <laughs> like, yes sir yes sir i have been just uh i've, I've had a couple of like i had a five hour session i think friday oh my god you did yeah I, that's true i, I, remember, I remember i think it was i was lurking long yeah, I was just like, all right, let's go. <laughs> um, uh, I'm back on the Halo grind, basically. Uh, I don't think I'm ever going to leave the Halo grind, but um, trying to, trying to, so we're still doing the coaching thing for Halo Infinite, so I got to make sure that I'm playing the game so that I understand and can help the team. Um, yeah. 
in a coaching like capacity and like knowing how the game is actually functioning how it plays should help and garner attention for them and then also just like dude i we linked up our old school xboxes linked up xlink do you know what xlink is do you have I any idea what that is i think so no do you, do you know what xbox connect is connect like a camera oh okay this is gonna be fun because <laughs> you're a zoomer and you don't know um back in the day uh xbox live there were two ways to basically get online the mm. one way is to pay and you'd get an xbox live service you hook up to your like internet service provider and you go through the whole service like a regular subscription right um, tv like streaming service or you could connect your xbox to your computer and then use your computer's internet connection to basically connect with other people's xboxes that were doing the same thing over the internet and you would do it for free it was basically xbox live but there were more steps so you can like join a lobby and then your system link within your xbox would populate with games so i've been playing halo 2 and halo 3 og halo 2 and halo 3 on the xbox and xbox 360 it's crazy like the, yeah i'm gonna start i got a connection or um, an adapter on the way where i'm gonna start streaming those matches it'll Dude. be hd quality um it'll look pretty good i've already tested it uh yesterday and i have massive input delay because i'm using a monitor but i have a tv right up here and that one right there in the wall for people that are watching um that that's an old tv that's like from 2009 2010 that still might work for the original xboxes so okay. hopefully okay. hopefully i can get rid of that input delay and we, we're gonna go straight up boomer living in 2005 <laughs> um just just for the fun of it i also competed in a halo 5 pc tourney did you get a chance to tune in for that one? No, I actually didn't. I saw you talking about it, though, I think, on, like, Twitter or something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah, I, I needed to change a pace from Infinite, so I was like, okay, let's go to Halo 5. Haven't played the game in ages. <laughs> um, got bopped. It was rough. I won't lie to you. Oh, yanks. Um, but it, it was overall a good time. I still want to play single-player games. I still have a long list of other games that I need to get into. But, man, it's like... Uh, with with coaching and the tournaments coming up and hcs being a nightmare that recently changed their schedule last minute it's like it's hard to plan for free time because <laughs> i got to get the guys prepared and i'm trying to do the uh mental gymnastic kind of thing of like it, like organizing and making sure everybody's on task so all they have to really do is concentrate on shooting and working together as a team oh. so yeah. more of a manager role than an actual coach if that makes sense so it's just, it's just uh, been busy, man. Just been busy. Excited to be on the podcast, though. To get I am too, man. Excited for these stories. Yes, sir. You know saying? Yes, sir. You want to start them off? Let's just segue oh, into it. Let's do it, dude. Let's do it. Let's get into it. All right. First story we got from Engadget. I love this, I love this outlet. I love that name. Can't get over it. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. So this, is, this was an interesting one. Sony is set to stop offering the PlayStation Plus collection after May 9th. So if you own a PS5, make sure to claim the included games before then. Um, all good things must come to an end. Since September 2020, Sony has offered the PlayStation Plus collection to PlayStation 5 owners with an active PlayStation Plus membership. That bundle comes with some of the PlayStation 4's best games, including Bloodborne, God of War, The Last of Us Remastered, Batman Arkham Knight, Fallout 4, and Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Come May 9th, however, Sony will no longer offer the PlayStation Plus collection the company announced today. Um, if you haven't claimed any of the 19 titles included in the bundle, you have until May 9th to do so. Uh, once those games are associated with your account, you'll continue to have access to them as long as you maintain an active PlayStation Plus subscription. Sony says it plans to focus its efforts on growing the PlayStation Plus library of monthly games and its, its, and its games catalog. Its PlayStation owners can access by subscribing to either PlayStation Plus Extra or Premium. On that note, the company also revealed February's slate of PlayStation Plus games. I'll just go over them real quick. I, I we don't. I feel like we don't do like stuff like this enough. Like when we're recapping games, we don't do like, oh, here's what's available yeah. on Gold, like Xbox Gold. Anyway. This month's lineup features Evil Dead: The Game, Ali Ali World, Destiny 2: Beyond Light, and Mafia: The Definitive Edition. Very very solid single player game, by the way, Mafia. Um, and the Definitive Edition is fantastic. 
Um, you can download all four games starting on February 7th, and they'll be available until March 6th. Titles on offer. You should definitely give Ali Ali World a try. That's what this, uh, <laughs> so this writer's saying. Um, it's, it's one of Engadget's favorite games of 2022. I don't think I've ever heard of Ali Ali World. I well, actually have. Um, okay. I heard, it, yeah, Ali Ali World might, I gotta, I don't want to put out any false like info, right? So let's try to figure out. I think it's an indie dev. Um, Sounds it's a single like player, it. like narrative driven game. And it's kind of cartoonish. It's probably the best way to say it. Okay, it's like okay. 2D kind of like, what, not, is it almost like a platformer? When you go from like left to right, kind of sliding, like old school Sonic is kind of classified in this way, mm. where it's like go from left to right, ob objective based. There's a story, and it's kind of like Ali Ali is a skateboarding game, so you're like grinding and going across the map. It's pretty sick. <laughs> that was sick. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so overall, it, you know, it is, um, it's kind of upsetting. Yes. Personally, for me, I mean, your boy don't have a PS5 yet, so, like, I can't get in on the action right now, Mike, you know what I'm saying? I got until May 9th if I really want to get in this action, but anyways, enough about me. I think, um, especially for all owners out there, especially people who are trying to get a PlayStation now that they are readily available, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, you better hurry up, because um, this is actually a decent, like, these are decent games, like, these are PS4's best games, I would say, so... Um, it's definitely good if you can get a, if you can get your hands on these for free. It's a, like a huge plus, I think, uh, especially running on a PS5. So, yeah, that's a fact. I, I think the best thing to do is, especially if you have the PS5, um, and you have the subscription service, is just to go, like, take ownership of those games so you can come back to it later if you want to. Yeah, just to have that option. Like I do that several times with like Amazon Prime games. They'll just randomly drop old school games. Yeah. And I'll see it, and I'm like, okay, that interests me. I, I don't know if I have time to play it, but, like, it's free. And if I click accept mm -hmm. code, I get to keep it for as long as I have Prime. So, right, yeah. Yeah, uh, those are always awesome. Basically the same concept. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is a thing where you have to, you have to maintain your uh, PlayStation Plus subscription. But, I mean, most people, especially if you're getting a PlayStation, they're probably playing on it, you know, every week, if not, you know, every other day. So um you, know, you probably have the yeah. description already so it doesn't really matter but um but yeah i mean then, then again for me i mean it would like stuff like that especially if i had a ps5 i mean it would give me a reason to like get playstation plus <laughs> just so i can get access to that library and you know there's also free games they give out every month i mean there's so much stuff so um there, there's a lot of a lot of value in this uh in the subscription these days so and you know the extra premiums you get an even bigger access to a bigger library it's like facts yeah it's nice man Makes you want to PlayStation 5, I'm not going to lie, you know? <laughs> Speaking of PlayStation 5, I should have mentioned this in the update, uh, is I got the PS5 DualSense Edge controller. Oh, yes, sir. And I wanted to give a full breakdown and give my honest opinion and review. So I'll give you... I, I can't give a full review yet, but I'll give you early impressions, okay? Okay, okay. Ready? So right, right off the bat, I go straight to the first game that I can think of where a PlayStation controller might matter the most. And believe it or not, I believe that would be Rocket League. And this, I like you have this. to be you have to be real precise when you play that game, especially at a high level and high intensity. That that controller is better than pretty much every PlayStation controller I've ever touched. Oh, he right, said it. Like he right off the bat. Said it. Like just just the joysticks, the timing, the responsiveness, how it feels and looks. I mean, it just looks sick. Uh here is my gripe. Okay. It's not even a true gripe. It's a early adopter kind of uh, issue that happens when you like buy new products, right? I don't have a PlayStation 5. I bought a PlayStation 5 controller, especially the DualSense Edge. It's brand new. You could only buy it through the PlayStation website. There is no software on the PC currently that implements the controller and lets you program it properly. So you have like back buttons mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. You can download, I think it's a third-party website on Steam for five bucks called uh, DSX, where you can get the option to basically customize and do a couple of things to make it work. It, the most common third-party web uh, program is DS4 Windows, which yeah. is where you spoof your PlayStation controller into like an Xbox 360 controller. 
and you can reprogram all the buttons and like with the PS4 DualSense controller and the button attachment, you can like physically hit the buttons a certain way to like reprogram the paddles. With this DualSense Edge, I can't really reprogram the paddles. I know people that have already, they found a way to do it, but I'm just going to wait until DS4 Windows does an update or maybe PlayStation releases some type of update that you can download through their website and you can use the controllers on a PC before gotcha. I give an honest opinion. Smart right now, I, it's good. Mod, modularity of video, like controllers is the way to go pretty much moving forward for me. Um, Thrustmaster controllers, hopefully they start doing that with uh, Scuff and we'll start seeing that with Battle Beaver controllers. Yeah. But PlayStation going that way. And I mean, Xbox needs to follow suit. Yeah. Just saying. It's, um, I must say, it's reassuring to hear that the joysticks work as well as they do, considering they're, they're modular. Good. You know, considering you could take them out, but they're still solid. Love to hear that. They're good. They're good. Like the, the dead zones are really nice too. I tried to, I spoofed, I spoofed the controller and I went into Halo Master Chief Collection. And the reason why you go to Halo Master Chief Collection is that game always has like stick drift. I swear to you, it's ridiculous. You can have a brand new fresh out of the box controller and that's like the ultimate test. Go go into MCC, turn mm -hmm. all your dead zones off, put your controller down, see what happens. Like <laughs> nine times out of ten it's gonna drift. I've only experienced it twice where it doesn't. The new controller yeah. I got in the Thrustmaster. So right. it's okay. a good controller, man. All right. It's a good controller. Sounding pretty good. Sounding pretty good. Yes, sir. Excited to hear more. All right. Speaking of hearing more, how about we jump into Apex Legends? Okay. Let's do it. All right. So, Hotaku. Uh, Apex Legends mobile shutting down after only eight months, and the Battlefield mobile game has been canceled. So, EA, EA has had a lot of bad news to share today, including the Apex Legends mobile, and it only has 90 days left. So, Apex Legends mobile, the mobile port of EA and Respawn's popular Battle Royale shooter, is not long for this world, according to Zach at Kotaku. So EA confirmed today, just eight months after the game's launch, the free-to-play offshoot will be shutting down May 1st, 2023. What's more, EA plans to sunset Battlefield Mobile as well. And that's, that's a pretty heavy hit, I think. The original yeah. Apex Legends, a, a multiplayer-only spin-off of sci-fi FPS Titanfall. Remember they just dropped that crap out of the blue? <laughs> yeah. Back in February 2019? <laughs> Do I ever? Be, yeah, so it basically became one of the most popular FPS shooters, I think. I would of, agree. I think it was really, yeah, it was probably PUBG always held the title for like ever. And they fell off a cliff because like H1Z1 and then, or was it H1Z1 then PUBG? That's a really good question, actually. It might have been H1. I can't remember. I think it's H1. I think it's yeah, H1, it went H PUBG, and then. A yeah. H1, PUBG, then it went Fortnite, of course. Yeah. Um, but Fortnite was never first person. So Apex was the true first person, in my opinion. Yeah. So a few years later, after that came out, EA and Respawn teased a mobile version of the shooter and it eventually released in May of last year for iOS and Android. And now you've only got 90 days to play it until it's killed off the EA servers. Oh, man. Uh, so, and here the crazy thing is, they they canceled the Battlefield mobile as well. Um, so the I don't know how you feel about this, Kyle, but like mobile gaming has been the fastest growing like branch of gaming there is right now, and it doesn't make any sense to me that they're out here canceling the games unless nobody's playing it. Either yeah. nobody's playing it, or or they're just not making money. Yeah, which is weird. I mean, because we've talked about it before. Mobile gaming is the most lucrative section of yes. the gaming industry. <laughs> like they, they make the most monies in mobile. So, I mean, I, I don't, you know, it's funny. I never actually played Apex Mobile. I don't know how it ran. I'm assuming it ran decent, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's shutting down like this either tells me they're not making money off of it or it just wasn't, they weren't able to, they weren't able to upkeep development or just something because it seems odd. I mean, we're, we're talking that was just you know a year ago <laughs> like almost yeah. that it came out so i mean yeah i mean, I mean there was exclusive content too for right so i mean it, to give incentive for people to get it so it's like it's so it's strange to me how it just didn't work i think there's one or two things that ended up happening where it's like 
maybe the competition against COD Warzone on mobile, they just couldn't keep up. Yeah. Because remember that, like, at the COD Warzone 2, Modern Warfare 2, like, promo that they did, they also did, like, a Warzone 2 premiere. And before they did, like, the premiere of all the content creators on PC, they started showing the mobile, like, program, uh, pro gamers playing, too. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I think so, so. That was pretty nuts, too. So it's like, maybe maybe Apex just was never popular on mobile. So, yeah. uh, let's read the official tweet that they made. Respawn. Um, I'll just read the graphic. So the graphic is... Once my thing loads... Okay, so the decision does not come with ease. Factors beyond our control have prevented us from maintaining the high-quality experience and co uh, content that our players deserve. As a result, the game will sunset on May 1st, 2023 at 4 p.m. Pacific time, after which it will no longer be playable. Our gratitude to our players and teams for joining us on Apex Legends Mobile, even if for a short time, is unending. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. It's so sad, what, man, you know? What else do you say? I mean, yeah, sure, what else do you say? I mean, it's kind of... You know, I mean, because they, you know, they say factors beyond our control. It's like, okay, is that management? Is that technical, like, dead? Is that, like, what exactly is that kind of thing? Because, um, yeah, I mean, it could be a multiple, a multitude of things, but, um, I mean, but if it's, I mean, it, it's got to be something serious if they just had to literally just shut the game down. <laughs> it's like, jeez. I, I mean, EA did lay off a bunch of developers, too, and they shut down a studio. Yeah. Or, relatively recently, so... Maybe they're just uh, they're planning for the future of whatever could possibly happen, and they're just saying like, "Hey, Apex Legends isn't profitable enough to take a risk on this." Yeah, that's probably Who the knows? best guess, you know. Yeah, dude, just crazy. Just a theory. Crazy. Did you did we talk about Battlefield Mobile? I think you may have mentioned it. Yes, yeah. I did just briefly mention it. Yeah. Yeah, Quice has quietly announced that it was season development <laughs> on the unreleased, by the way. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of nuts. Um, Didn't say anything about it whatsoever. It's like, yeah. maybe they're trying to, they're probably trying to do another Apex Legends launch. I swear, man, when Apex Legends launched, it always felt like the devs were, like everybody was working on Titanfall. And then you had a couple of devs that were just staying afternoons and just made Apex in their free time. <laughs> That's what it feels like, yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of the same literally. assets you know that's for sure literally the same um yeah this is here as the industry has evolved the publisher's plan surrounding a long-running mill sim franchise has changed instead it will pivot from its current direction in order to best deliver on our vision for the franchise okay all right ea we'll see you know we'll see that, that, that's like corporate talk for our, we made a decision deal with it we'll figure it out later <laughs> it's right. like who knows man um yeah, this is a, I love the last. Is despite reportedly laying off developers and shutting down a studio, EA also announced today that it spent over three hundred twenty million dollars on stock buybacks this quarter. <laughs> Jeez, man. Oh, I forgot why stock buybacks happen, but I don't think it happens because the company is doing well. I think it's like to prevent the stock from tanking and then everybody's selling, like a so. fire sale. I think that's what it's for. I don't know. Yeah. I try not to pay attention too much when it comes to those, like, stocks yeah. manipulation. Kind of, I don't even know. I know, day trader. That, I know, economist. That, so. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I, that ain't my role, man. So if you're playing EA, uh, Apex Legends Mobile, you only have about 90 days, less than 90 days to play it, yeah. uh, according to this article. So you have until May 3rd. May 1st. Sorry, May 1st. It'd be funny if it was April 1st. April 1st. We're still here. <laughs> What is the weird? That would actually yeah. be a good idea. <laughs> be hilarious. Yeah. Segway is pretty nice into our next article, though. Huh? Yeah. Next article because it's still Electronic Arts we're going to be discussing. But I pulled this article from the uh, from the great Jason Schreier at Bloomberg. Oh my goodness! Straight from the uh, straight from the man himself. Electronic Arts cancels Secret Apex Legends game in development. I honestly forgot that this was a thing because it had been teased, I think, in the past. Completely forgot about it. Yeah, totally rumored, I thought, right? 
Yeah, that's what I thought. So Electronic Arts Inc. canceled a game based in the popular Apex Legends of Titanfall franchises, according to three people familiar with the matter. The game, which had been publicly announced, was in production at EA Developer Respawn Entertainment. On Tuesday, EA, one of the world's biggest video game publishers, gave a disappointing outlook for revenue in the current quarter. The company said it's canceling the Apex Legends mobile game, which we just mentioned, as well as the uh, unreleased Battlefield mobile version. Um, and the studio behind it as well so ea has delayed the highly anticipated star wars jedi survivor which i don't even know if we mentioned that at all but i mean it was being delayed it's still coming out i think in may but um like that. We, anyway. we did not mention it um i know that i think you and i linked it to yeah. each other and i think the only thing i was thinking is just thank god it's still coming out <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, i guess because the first one was really good so yeah seriously um anyways management informed the unnamed games team about 50 people that ea will try to find positions for them with the company this is where it kind of sucks though anyone who can't be placed will be given severance yeah. packages and laid off according to people familiar with the matter who also speak anonymously because they were not authorized to speak to the press <laughs> which i think is hilarious of course um and of course ea declined the comment no surprise there um but yeah, the canceled project, codenamed TFL or Titanfall Legends, was a single-player game set in a universe shared by Apex Legends and Titanfall. It was directed by veteran designer Mohamed Alavi um, until he left the company in early 2022. Um, although the game hadn't been advertised, EA had hinted at it several times. It's crazy, dude. Um, yeah. But yeah, so a project we were not fully aware of um, has also been canceled along with so much other stuff at EA and is the company crumbling, yeah. Mike? Is it, is it happening? EA? No. No, EA is not crumbling. I don't believe it. No, not with the way they run businesses, man. They run them into the ground, steal all the money, and they create terrible games and fix them like <laughs> five years after the fact. Yeah. But I will say they, they're going to survive like they always do. Like little cockroaches. Um, can you tell how <laughs> I really feel about it, EA? So, <laughs> Titanfall Legends, I mean, they've hinted a couple of times about how Titanfall... They they kept saying what was the phrase? It was always just like we haven't completely abandoned Titanfall or something like that. Oh, I think always so. made it seem like the IP is still available. We'll come back eventually. When really it's like everybody just wants to play Titanfall three, but you know they're gonna do some Diablo crap and launch a mobile only game. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of like a new Diablo, it's like new Titanfall. Nah, nah, mobile. <laughs> but yeah. again, we we just talked about it in the last article. It's like. Mobile gaming is the fastest growing gaming and uh, gaming sector, and it also makes probably the biggest profit margin out of all games. It certainly does. So. It certainly does. Um, yeah. Um, very odd from EA, but it's EA, so you know there's stuff in the pipeline. You still got Star Wars to look forward to. I would be very interested to see a single player game in this universe. So. Um, I am yeah, I am upset cool. in that regard because you know I think it's be a really dope experience, but I don't know, maybe maybe in the future, maybe we'll come back to it, you know? I wonder how far they got along to the point where they'd be willing to like save assets and possibly return at some point if it's uh if the uh market allows it, you know. Yeah, speaking of single player, did Titanfall have a single player in a campaign story mode? I believe it did, yes. Sure did. I wonder why I don't really remember that. Yeah, I don't think I, I think... ever played it. I heard it was okay. Like, yeah, her turn. I heard, heard both of them like multiplayer. I remember and the mechanics and like how everything played out was yeah. apparently super good. Now I play. I played the first Titanfall on Xbox One back when the VCR yeah. Xbox One launched, and it actually it ran really well, and I actually really enjoyed it. I had fun in that game. It was one of the few yeah, games that was like available at launch. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. Maybe that whole studio like Respawn's been crushing it. We just haven't been giving enough props. Yeah, maybe. So. I mean, they, they've had winners, you know. I think. Um, Oh yeah, it's easy to highlight their losers, and it's it's amplified whenever they like take an L, which I you know respectfully so or rightfully so you know you know when you're doing something yeah. sinister, I think it's a good to uh good for the community to be like, hey, this is not okay. So, um, I think the yeah, I think the major thing when it comes to EA games is you're gonna usually like you're either gonna get a horrible game that's just gonna be broken, nobody plays it, or you're gonna get a masterpiece. That's like crippled by microtransactions or monetary, like, like predatory monetization, you know? Yeah. Like a, a perfect example of that is the Battlefront series. Like Battlefront, yeah. yep. Battlefront 2 launched with like the worst monetization I think I've ever seen in gaming. 
Horse microtransactions. It was terrible. Loot boxes, gambling, basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, literally impossible to unlock characters. Now it's like they don't support it anymore, but the servers are still up and you can play everything. There's a lot of hackers now. Shout out to hackers. <laughs> but it's yeah. it's weird. That community is uh, interesting Yeah. as well. Yeah, I guess if there's any positive that was spun out of that situation, it's that there was a closer eye put upon like, you know, microtransactions and predatory yeah. practices for developers <laughs> in that sector. So that's the only yeah, positive they, that came out of that. The, yeah, it was so bad. It got like international attention um, where like Nintendo was like, I'll never do that. <laughs> and then you got <laughs> Sony just like, that's a good idea. <laughs> and then, <laughs> then the European Union was like, okay, we need to monitor you guys. We got to figure this out. Yeah. And then you got Fortnite that does it right. Are you kidding me? Perfect skins yeah, that you can just buy outright. No, no loot box, no nothing. Fact, man, that's, that's crazy. That's all you like. That's seriously all it should be. I think. Just it's my, skins. Yeah. I, I've said it. I've said it so many times on the show too. Smite is the worst example of a microtransaction system. I swear to God, it's like, <laughs> why do we have loot boxes, man? Like it's just uh, it's so frustrating, especially when a when a game that already you know. All right, I ain't gonna go there, but <laughs> there, there's just I I just you know I I'm not a fan of it. I mean I, I guess there's probably people that defend it, but it's just yeah I wish they would change it. It's trash man, trash. <laughs> nothing dude. else to say. Nothing, really nothing else, dude. Ugh. All right, shall we move on to the next one? Or downers. Yeah, most <laughs> most of this are like most of this uh, is all gonna be kind of sad in a way yeah, well, we just report the news you know regardless yeah, you know? it's just uh everything kind of imploded this week yeah so i it's think like... it was just it was literally like one story after another and here's another one um did let's get into it before i start talking about it so this is another article by kotaku it's by uh luke plunkett player pronounced her name correctly and the title of the article is epic kills a battle royale game less than six months after release that's nuts. Six months. Okay, so in August 2022, Epic Games, developers of Fortnite, custodians of the Epic Game Store, creators of the Unreal Engine, rich as God. <laughs> <laughs> I love the talker, this, dude. <laughs> published a melee based battle royale game called Rumbleverse. It is now January 2023, February, all ready for me here in Australia. Okay, that explains the humor. <laughs> um, and the game is already being killed off. Here are some impressions written by Zach. Okay, so you might remember it back in 2022. Okay, uh, let's get into it. So, do you remember this game? This is the one where the chickens started hatching and stuff like that, right? This was, right no. This is the um, Rumble versus like the wrestler style battle royale game where you're like a you're essentially like a wrestler and you're just running around like just it's the most cartoony thing ever but it was actually a lot of fun i thought because like you're just you're literally like flinging people around jumping everywhere like doing suplexes and like doing these <laughs> huge like dive bombs on people and then dude there was a lot of potential here so this surprised me but yeah it was I, a wrestling I'm... style Did, so you got a chance to actually play it oh yeah 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 i put a few hours in oh geez all right so what do you think? Like, what? Why would he, why would Epic Games pull it off the shelves after six months? I mean, I'll, so from my perspective, like I said, I played a few hours, but did I return to the game? No, I, I'll be honest, I didn't. Um, I think there's. Uh, I love the concept, and I'm sure there was a lot of other people, especially when it first came out, that loved it. Um, yeah, you know, I loved. I loved the art in it. The art was very much like an Epic game style. Um, which, you know, it was very Fortnite-y in that sense. Um, but, but I mean, that certainly was an issue. I mean, it's Epic Games we're talking about. They're going to make, you know, good... Um, I think they always do well in the art department. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I just... It, it could come down to a lot of things. I mean, the gameplay was... Um, I, I thought the gameplay was decent. I enjoyed it. I mean, there was, you know... I, I don't... There was certainly, like, a skill gap. I don't think it was an insane skill, like, ceiling, though. So, like, you could probably learn it pretty quick. Um yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. I was trying to remember. I was trying to remember if they had squads or not. I feel like it was like duos only. It was something weird when I first played, where it was like you can only queue with like two people or solos or something like that. Um, so they possibly limited the amount of people that you could play with. Yeah, possibly. Um, that could be one thing. But you know, I, and also too, I think it's just you know. I I, I mean, I think it was just kind of like I feel like a bunch of people were probably like me and just you know you played a few hours and then you're like well. 
That's, there's really not much else here, so <laughs> I'm just going to play something else. I did the same thing with that dodgeball game. Remember when that dodgeball game came oh, out? Yeah, um, oh, yeah. Oh, what is that? I can't called? remember what it's called either. I, I think I still have it in Steam. Let me, oh, I'm going to open my Steam while we talk about I, it's it. Gonna, it's going to come but to there, me. Hold on. But there are those games that, like, they come out and they're so much fun. But the problem with them is you have to keep playing them with a select group of friends. It's kind of like a game. This is so weird. It's a game from like early 2000s where you have to play it in a living room together. But because it's modern times, you have to play it online. And everybody's like busy now, right? And there are so many other games that you're competing against that those games, even though they're good and fun, yeah. aren't going to be successful, right? Yeah. It was Knockout City, Mike. That's what it was. <laughs> Thank you. It was on Epic, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, it was on EA Play, I think. What it was Knockout. on. Uh... Um, so it was Knockout through Game City Pass. Is... I think I got it through. Yeah, Knockout City, banger of a game. Why? I, I like that game. Yeah, Knockout City. Yeah, it came out in May twenty first, twenty twenty one. Which is crazy. Um, it's, it's almost on two Nintendo already. as well, man. Like I was already almost two years old. Pfft, what? It is nuts. All right, so let's get let's get back to this game. Okay, Rumbleverse. Yep. Um, I'm gonna read the exact quote that they put on their company site. Kind of a read, but we'll get through. It. <laughs> yeah. So at Iron. At Iron Galaxy, we believe very strongly in the value of bringing people together to share meaningful experiences and games. Every single one of us is a gamer. It's what motivates us to create. With the announcement of the sunsetting of Rumbleverse, we want to share a more personal note with the players who have joined us in Capital City. With your... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Grapital. When you... <laughs> yeah. Grapital. I, I was like, wait, that doesn't look right. <laughs> When you work on a video game, you imagine the community that will show up to play it someday. For years, we dreamed about a lively city filled with people fighting to become a champion. We strived to create a vibrant place that celebrated the competitive spirit. Our goal was to bring joy back to online multiplayer gaming. The people who gave Rumbleverse a chance and took it on as a new hobby have validated every day that we put into bringing our ideas to life. We have loved watching you play. We have learned from your stories and your insights. We even passed around the art you've created to immortalize your best moments in the streets. So people were making like fan art and they put it in the game? I think so, yeah. That's it's cool. I mean, dude, just real oh, quick before gosh. you continue reading. This, yeah. I think this game ran pretty well. Like, I enjoyed how, like, it was no, like, hiccups or anything. So, yeah, I mean, it's another just, like, kind of check box that they, you know, they made. And I'm just like, yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of hard to believe it's, like, this soon, you know? It's kind of that's tough, it's tough too because it's like maybe yeah I'll I'll get into it after we finish this. So it is our uh, they continue. It is our sincerest hope that this news does not mark the end of Rumbleverse. You may not yet have seen the Rumble in its final form. If we can welcome people back onto the deck of the Battle Barge again, we hope you'll be there, laced up and ready to take your rightful place in the cannon. Iron Galaxy will keep making games. It's our passion and our purpose. Our people are filled with skills and inspirations to keep the world playing. Thank you for playing. This is not the last time you'll hear from us. This is not the last time we'll invite you to play. So there's two things I want to mention before we get into it. Also, Splitgate had this basically a similar response. Remember Splitgate's basically yeah. final tour? Um, they they basically said, Splitgate is no more, but we're going to create a Splitgate too. Yeah. We're going to try to basically make it more of like, it, we're not done with this IP. We're coming back. We're going to reiterate, like figure something out. Yeah. I think there's a major issue in gaming where smaller devs and publishers and all this other, well, not publishers, mostly the devs, they they try to do this like live service, always online video game type. Yeah. And it requires people to always be playing the game multiplayer wise. And the moment you have a like a small player pool, the game's dead, right? Yeah. So yeah. maybe they need to concentrate a little bit on like having a story mode, giving people. I, this is the one thing I always felt with Splitgate, and there's another game I'm thinking of, but right now I, it's lost my mind. I always felt the problem with Splitgate was I couldn't customize my character to resemble me yeah. as like a person, um, and like create myself in the game, so I can like try to like. Try to like be more involved with video games, right? Like in a fantasy kind of kind of way. 
was Rumbleverse like that at all, or were you did you always have to play as like set characters? No, they they had like different body types and character types and stuff like that. They did have that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think when it kind of comes down to it, like a game, because like that la- the last part of this like statement, it kind of makes me hate the idea of like kind of like you're saying they may, and I kind of hope they do just try to like build upon what they've done here and make something better in a sense. Because I feel like, especially with a studio like this, that's probably like a smaller studio. You make this game, you spend a lot of time on this game, especially if it's like a live service game. You'll spend a lot of time on it, and then by the time it comes out, it's either behind the curve or it's just like a complete miss. <laughs> like, we're just like, yeah. okay, this was like, this probably would have like popped off a couple of years ago, but it's just you didn't have enough time. And so, hopefully, you know, they, now that they have a foundation, they can kind of go back and say, okay, hey, like, you know, it, I think it's part of making these type of live service games is you kind of have to be able to predict what's, you know, how the market's going to sh- kind of sway by the time you guys are setting to release it. But, but yeah, it's a that's a hard act. Um, it's a hard balancing act there. So um, I could just hope that they take what they learn from this and you know work on something new that's that's uh, better and you know ready to stay for at least you know at least a couple of years. You know that's the goal. So yeah. yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I think that's pretty accurate. Um, hopefully they bounce back. That'd be pretty cool to see. And same thing with like all the other devs that this kind of this this is not like an abnormality i feel like this happens more and more or we're just noticing it more and more because yeah. one we're that's like what we're trying to do here on the show <laughs> yeah but also it's just the internet and like i i'm surprised i actually hadn't played rumbleverse remember like at the start of this i thought it was that chicken game you know what i'm talking about the <laughs> yeah. battle royale where like yeah. you shoot somebody yeah, and they turn into chickens yeah you're thinking of um realm royale that's what you're thinking yes <laughs> i'm thinking of realm royale yeah yeah i am that goofy game so, there's so many battle royales yeah or or here's a here's another throwback dude this is this is more more along with what i was saying with Splitgate because you couldn't like represent yourself hyperscape oh true yeah dude i forgot I, about that oh my gosh everybody forgot about dude. it everybody did because it was like it wasn't a bad shooter it was fun to play you could like team up with friends and go in there and have fun but it's like why don't i ever have the urge to play like why don't i care to go back <laughs> yeah. oh because i'm playing as like a bot like <laughs> yeah. like a humanoid character with no personality yeah like, come on it's true man yeah also anyway that that's yeah. what i'm still saying that yeah, also with this game too, servers will shut down February twenty eighth. So you got a month to play if you want to drive dive in and actually check it out before it shuts down. Um, and it'll that's give you an idea, you know, if it's like because you may play it and be like, why is it shutting down? I don't know. That's probably that's kind of what I was like. You know, I played it. I was like, it's a pretty good game. I think it'll last. And then here we are, six months almost, and there's some setting it. It's like what? Um, it's crazy, crazy stuff, man. You know, we talk a lot about multiplayer games, Mike. An awful yes, we lot. do. This is pretty much multiplayer game. Kind of. Yeah, four player game. Anyway. Um but <laughs> Redfall is upcoming, the upcoming Bethesda shooter. It has been confirmed by the devs themselves that Redfall will require an online connection, even in single player mode, Mike. Even then. Are you surprised? Be honest. No. It's Bethesda, no. <laughs> well, it's not just Bethesda anymore, is it? Nah, guess not. It's Xbox. <laughs> remember drm i do oh. <laughs> there's xbox one uh, yeah yeah solo right, players are still w- gonna have to be permanently connected to play like still <sighs> the requirement is confirmed in the game's newly published official faq which states that while players will be able to play solo without an xbox gold subscription they will still need to be online to do so under the question will playing redfall require an online connection for single player as well as co-op. The FAQ states, a persistent online connection is required for single-player and co-op. It also states that a Bethesda.net account will be required to play the game. That's, which is very interesting. But I add. While, well, while many modern games include DRM, which, off, which requires a one-off online check to prevent piracy, a persistent online requirement remains relatively uncommon for modern games with single player modes even in titles that are primarily co-op focused but have single player elements recent co-op titles gotham knights monster hunter rise and marvel's avengers all allow for offline play in single player mode meanwhile it takes two which can only be played with two players allows for offline play during local couch co-op when it was originally released 2021's back for blood required an online connection when even playing solo with ai teammates 
but a later update removed this requirement, allowing players to play through the story offline. VGC, which we pulled this article from, the Game Chronicle has asked Bethesda for comment on the story. Um, Xbox has historically promoted the importance of game preservation, most significantly with its extensive backwards compatibility program. The company also famously U-turned on hugely unpopular plans to require an online connection for Xbox One, and I remember that like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was massive. Oh, it really was. Um, however, last summer's Microsoft's games arm was criticized for its broader online DRM policy on its consoles. After a sev after server outages left some console owners unable to launch their purchased games for several days. Um, that's very uh, that's not good. <laughs> um, so it says, oh does it play a Twitter account dedicated to testing commercial releases to ensure they work entirely internet free? Claimed shortly after the outages that its testing has revealed that a majority of physical Xbox games require an online check before they would boot. Oh man, so crazy. There's even more of the article, you know. I'd say, you know. What's your opinion on this, Mike? Do, it, do, do you uh, want to have to log on to play a video game that's single player? I, I hate it. 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 I mean, come on, man. Like, how many times have we... Did I, I, maybe it's just because I'm, like, old school, I guess. I'm a little bit older. I'm used to games where, like, I have the cartridge, I have the CDs, I have, like, even digital format. I'll download it and, like, can play the games whenever I want, offline, online. It doesn't matter, right? Why are we required to be online to play games locally? You know, how, like ridiculous that is. Super um, ridiculous, you know. I, it's it's very annoying because I I feel like the way the gaming industry is going to go, especially Nintendo's, luckily, thankfully, not doing this. But like Nintendo or not Nintendo, Sony, Xbox, um, and PC, it's like it's going to get to the point where single player games are going to have to be connected to online servers and then when they just decide not to support the games anymore they're going to cut off the servers and then you can't play the games anymore it's like there's yeah. no more days of like bringing back borderlands from like the original xbox 360 days and loading that up on like your console in your living room just for like so a throwback you know doesn't or like loading imagine imagine you can grab like an n64 mario kart plug into your N64 system unless it was connected to a router that was connected to the internet. Like, what? Yeah. That, that's, that's the way things are going, and I passionately hate it. I don't know anybody that would actually be on board with this other than corporate execs that don't play video games to begin with and that just want to make them money, make True. money on it. True. I want you to put yourself in the scenario, Mike. Uh -oh. The world has ended. Okay? No internet. <laughs> World's in the well, you not have electricity. You're li <laughs> you have a generator, all right? Stay with me here. All right, you have okay, a giant okay. generator. All right, last of us, let's go. You, you turn it on. And yeah. you go, you sit down on your couch, you turn on your TV. You're like, you know what? This world sucks. This is stupid. You know what? I'm just going to distract myself. Do -de -de and then you turn your Xbox on. Then you go to play the one and only Redfall by Bethesda. And then all of a sudden, on the on the right after the splash screen, a giant error message: "You're not connected to the internet." Soul like, yeah, no crushed. Problem. You know what I'm saying? Crushed. It's a fact. It's a fact. Man. Speaking of this hy hypothetical situation, let's let's go down a little bit. I want to have I want to have a personal question with you. Personal theory box, right? What console would you like to have in the next like? If that happened, where all you have is a generator, no power, like, you're disconnected from everything in the outside world, what console would you go with? Basically, it has to be local only. Dang. Tough, right? I, I feel like PC's cheating, so I won't say PC. Um, PC is definitely cheating, yeah. That's good. Hmm. Has to be a console. Dang. I mean, it's like I want to say Nintendo just for the practicality, but it's like I don't really, uh, I, I haven't played too many Nintendo games. I mean, I, I would enjoy them if I had nothing, you know, I have nothing else to do, right? Might as well play some <laughs> Nintendo games. But, but it's one of those things that's handheld, so you can take it everywhere. Um, I mean, battery's not the best on it, but hey, what are you going to do, you know? But we're in, a, we're in the post apocalyptic world here. I'll take what I can get. Um, I don't know. Probably the Switch just for the portability. 
I'm that's don't take it everywhere. One hundred percent, what I was going to say. Yeah, because if you're smart, you can get all the past games from all, the entire directory of Nintendo. Yeah, exactly. Through their like Nintendo stores, and like download all of them. You can have all the physical copies as well. You don't need to be connected to the internet with anything. It's true. Maybe maybe that's what Nintendo's marketing has always been. We'll be the game device at the end of the world when you need us most. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's our late that's game. That's the dude. new brand. That's our late that's game the... right there. Yeah, they're so far ahead. They're into the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, pretty much, man. That's what yeah, I but with. I'll be honest. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go PlayStation. I would not go Xbox. I I would go like the Switch, and I would make sure everybody else had a Switch. And we just be chilling, all connected, like through Bluetooth. It's true, dude. I mean, you know, and plus you play Breath of the Wild. I mean, that's a good like hundred hours of content right there. You could just yeah. <laughs> play Ocarina of Time for the first time. I know we got some Zoomers out here who have never touched it. They've only heard Legends. True, very true. So, yeah, um, yeah, switch it is. But yeah, I don't know, man. This whole online check. I mean, I, I get. I, I guess I can. Well, I don't even. I even I don't get it when they're like, "Oh, we're trying to prevent piracy." It's like. It's like, come on, man! Yeah. How much money? How much money are you losing out anyway on piracy? If that is even like an issue, they're not trying to prevent piracy. That's just a cover. You know what they're really trying to prevent? They're trying to prevent, prevent our freedom. Our freedom. Base. They're they're trying to prevent second sales on an existing game. That's the ultimate goal. They're trying to get yeah. rid of GameStop. They're trying to get rid of Walmart used games. Wal like. Target, whatever, name any retailer that sells video games second party or used video games. They're trying to get rid of that entirely. So you have to buy full face value every single time from the developer or publisher. I believe it. Yeah. That's the goal, man. Sure. And I am not here for it. <laughs> I'm not either. I ain't gonna lie. Not either. But you know, it's it's Bethesda, I'm not surprised. I'll just say it. Am I yeah. excited for Starfield? Of course. I mean, am I excited for Redfall? Yeah, sure. But, you know, yeah, it's good. DRM. <laughs> Redfall, I gotta tell you, man, Redfall looks good. It does, man. Redfall looks real good. It looks good, bro. Vampire. It's like Vampire Back for Blood. Yeah, I, 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 I can't get over how good it looks, so. Definitely one yeah. I'm checking out, baby. Yes, sir. Speaking of Back for Blood, let's get into the next article, shall we? <laughs> the final one, I must say. Yeah, it is the final one until we get into the February game releases. So, yeah, 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 yeah. pay attention until the end, please. All right, so this one is from IGN, a reputable news source. And do we have George Yang? So George Yang wrote an article called Turtle Rock is already done with Back for Blood. I see this. Say it ain't so, brother. Say it ain't so. I haven't beaten it yet. <laughs> Come on. Uh, apparently the studio is continuing on to its next game. So, Turtle Rock Studios announced that it will not be adding any more content to Back for Blood and will be focusing on its next big game. The game has already received three expansions, Tunnels of Terror, Children of the Worm, and River of Blood. That's pretty intense because they've been moving quick. They, like, had the game in beta and they were like, okay, cool, that everything seemed to work fine. Launch. And by the way, we're going to launch three DLC expansion packs. Let's go. Back Let's to back go. to back. So they, they launched prepared with this game, and it actually played really well when it came out. So here is a statement by Turtle Rock itself. So Turtle Rock Studios is actually pretty small for a studio making AAA games. We don't have quite enough folks to continue working on Back for Blood content while we spin up another game. Yes, another game. Given this, it's time for us to put our heads down, get back in the lab, and get to work on the next big thing. Turtle Rock Studios continued... While we may be a bit quieter in the short term, we promise that we'll be back bigger, bolder, and better than ever. What do you think? Is this good news? Is this bad news? Yeah, I think... Um, overall take? I don't know. I, I think overall... I think overall it's a W. Um, you know, sometimes, especially studios like this, for a smaller studio. I mean, coming forth, I think they would come forth and be like, hey, we like really want to put our all into this next you know, game, whether it's in that universe or something else. I mean, Back for Blood was a pretty solid game, I thought. It ran really well. It's, you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, at least for me. I mean, I know there's a lot of people, especially, like, you know, that, like, you know, love the horror and, like, Left for Dead genres. They were, like, they were, like, hating on it, I think. But, I mean, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited to see what Turtle Rock does next. I think if you have to, uh, if this if this means creating a better future product, Back for Blood, I mean, 
look i think back for blood had a good run and it's not necessarily like dead you know what i mean like, you still go and play it so it's like yeah i mean they're just not giving any more like added content yeah. is all which i think is fine i mean that had a good run of content for me i mean like i, I what are people standards nowadays like if people are like it, like if people are sitting there hating on back for blood because it, you know it's they're not making any more future content it's like oh the game already died didn't last that long i mean i just i don't know i don't agree with that i think it made a pretty solid run and i think there's a a lot to enjoy there and a lot of updates they made and i don't know i think i think it's a pretty solid game i don't yeah. know had a good I, run my eyes yeah i think uh go in that train of thought where people might say back for blood's already dead i, I don't think they fully understand the concept of the game they were trying to make because it's it's basically Left 4 Dead 3. Yeah. Um, because there's Left 4 Dead 4, Left 4 Dead, and then Left 4 Dead 2, right? There wasn't a third. So this was basically the third. And Left 4 Dead came from Valve. And Turtle yeah. Rock Studios originated with Valve, and they left to create Back for Blood. Yeah. So it's like, if you understand the history of like how Left 4 Dead was, and it's basically the same type of game, story-driven game. It's like you go from one point, in the, one point to another point, like a zombie apocalypse, where mutant zombies are trying to kill yeah. you and it's kind of like it's kind of almost like like a little rat race in a maze trying like where the rat is just about to be eaten instead of the cheese yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean yeah. um it, it's and i feel like it's a story driven game almost like a single player game but it encouraged to play co-op i think that's all it is and i think they achieved what they wanted to achieve like yeah i, I mean, think it's a perfect game exactly that's what i'm saying they set out what they wanted to do. They they brought their vision to life, and it was good. So I mean, yeah, yeah they want to move on to something else. I'm all for it, dude. I'm all support now here. You know, I think I'm Turtle saying. Rock Studios is a good studio, and the games that they made, and the way Valve like handled them, and the like, the game just felt good, man. If you played CS:GO and Counter Strike, and you just love shooter games, that was a proper shooter game. Yeah, back for blood. It was nice. It certainly was, man. Enjoyed it, dude. It was fun. The fun so, game. Go play. It's on Game Pass, everybody. Fun. Uh, IGN's Back for Blood review, and I'll quote it real quick before we let this article go. Uh, Back for Blood doesn't nail all the twists it attempts, but a creative card-based progression system, fantastic campaign, and a lighthearted tone make it a fun spin on a familiar genre. And well, I would so. argue it's a genre they invented to begin with. So Fair. Fair. A zombie shooter. I did, Puzzle yeah. game, almost. It's crazy, isn't it? It's what, a good well, time. Well said from IGN. That sums it up. Yes, sir. It's a solid video game, Mike. You know, it's hard to... I feel like it gets harder and harder to come by those nowadays, but I'm hoping for the best with the uh, releases this year. I think I think we've already had a couple of good releases, man, and it's only February. Like, think about it. We had High on Life. That's a good one, right? Um, let me... Let's let's go a trip back in time. Let's see if we can grab anyone. Um, Dead Space, the remake, yeah, right? Sir. Came out. Heard it was Forspoken, good remake. I... I don't know about first spoken. That one's kind of a touchy subject. I heard a lot of hit, uh, yeah. hate. hit or miss, you know? Hit or miss. Hit or miss. Hit or miss. Oh. Yeah, that's true. But it's like Monster Hunter Rise. I heard that was decent, right? Yeah. I heard that I heard that SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake was an absolute balling game. Baller. Can't confirm. <laughs> 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 but I think that's uh, where we're really at right now. But looking forward to this is a good segue, isn't it? Perfect looking segue. forward to the February games. All right, so let me let me pull up my trusted list real quick. Let's see. The trusted list. Let me let me drag this over. There are a handful of games coming out for February, and I put them in order. Okay? So, let's see. I'm just going to start reading these ones off. These are the February new video games for everybody, and to keep an eye out for, check them all out kind of thing. So, the first one is Deliver Us Mars. That's going to be on PC, PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and S. So, that's on all platforms except for the Switch. It looks like a pretty fun game, but the one I'm most excited for, that, that game, by the way, February 2nd. So by the time people hear this episode, it's already out. But you're pointing because of the next game? Sir. Next game is Hogwarts Legacy. That's on the PC, Xbox Series X, and S, PS5. And that one's coming out February 10th. And also, eventually, PS4, Xbox One, April 4th. And the Switch is even getting it. Did you know this? The Switch is mm. even getting it July 25th. Two days before my birthday, you don't say. Yo, it's, it's your birthday then? Okay, cool. You, oh my gosh. Happy birthday. I might get you a birthday present. It's uh, around Switch. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> There's a Switch game, dude, right there. There's a gift. <laughs> dude, yeah. All right, real quick, too. I think yes. it's very funny 
Well, funny. I don't know. Maybe that's not the right word. I think it's very interesting that uh they are actually delaying the last gen versions. <laughs> it's very very interesting. Huh? I think it points uh I think it, it it's it reveals an interesting pain point right now with developers. I think that we've talked about in the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that they do not like to de develop on the older systems. They don't even like to develop on the Xbox Series S. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I mean, so much so we that did cover can release yeah. at the same time. You know, so it's crazy. Yeah. So I don't think Hogwarts Legacy needs any type of story backdrop of what that game's going to be like. But have you seen any footage? Early oh, footage? I sure have. Oh, it looks. It looks gorgeous. It's it baller. Looks pretty, pretty cool, man. The um, early copy I'm, reviews pre embargo look pretty good. This looks yeah. pretty good. I think the only thing I can mark it down for right now is it's not going to have multiplayer like they said they would. Yeah. It's, Which is it's always a shame. markdown. Yeah, it's a real shame. It's a shame, but if it, if it bops, it bops. You know what I mean? So let's move on. There is Wanted Dead. That is on PC, PS4, 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and that's February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day if you're in the States. I think Valentine's Day is like the 15th or 16th in other countries. I'm not sure. Uh, there is Wild Hearts, which is PC, PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and that comes out February 17th. Following that guy up with Atomic Heart, which, have you seen anything for Atomic Heart? I have seen things for that game. I think I talked about that before. It's, uh, it actually looks really good. <laughs> yeah. It looks really good. The art style awesome. looks crazy. It almost looks like Dead Space, but like cyberpunk and it's <laughs> yeah. space. It's like it's sci-fi fantasy. It's absolutely insane. That's on all platforms except for the Switch, and that's February twenty-first. So we're gonna start getting into the later later days in the month where it just starts popping off. Um, there's Like a Dragon Ishin, which I believe is supposed to be similar to. Uh, uh, well, I know you what, know what's it. The... I know you know it. Oh, help me. What's Yakuza? the name of the Japanese Yakuza? Yakuza, yeah, yeah, Yakuza yeah, yeah. is like, is a Japanese gang. I think that's what it's Yeah, Yakuza, I think be. it's like, like a dragon is what they call it. Like, it's what they call it yeah. in the East, I think. But yeah, it's Yakuza. Yeah. It's like interchange. It's kind of like Resident Evil Biohazard kind of thing. Yeah, it's looking really cool. Um, yeah. That's on all platforms except for the Switch. Unfortunately, no Switch love. Pretty much most of this month except for one of the ones i'm going to get into in a little bit um so like a dragon is coming out february 21st then we got horizon call of the mountain that's hey, an yo. expansion no no sorry it's not an expansion it's vr uh playstation vr what does it say? is it the vr2 game or whatever yes oh. yep uh basically based off uh, horizon um the game not the motorsport one but like the fantasy <laughs> sci-fi wannabes and all the ocarina time kind of stuff yep. <laughs> and that's february 22nd that one looks pretty good there's company of heroes 3 that's on pc and eventually coming to ps5 and xbox series x and s in some time in the future but the pc version is going to be february 23rd now company of heroes is like a game in the making it's been going on i think the second one came out 10 years ago so this is going to be the third iteration and it's an rts style game pretty much Okay, okay. Uh, Sons of the Forest, which is a survival game. Think of it like, uh, what's that fire one? Like, you know what I'm talking about? The the fire survival game where it's like a puzzle thriller around the woods. Um, Don't Starve is everything? Uh, I don't know. It was relatively recently. I, I don't remember. Oh, but it's a survival. this is a survival game, PC only, February 23rd. Looks pretty good. Um, interesting art style. Looks kind of realistic, but cartoony at the same time. It's, it's a good vibe. Uh, Switch Love coming. Uh, there's some. There's a game for Switch, and it is Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. So Deluxe. Kirby's finally getting a game, man. Yeah. So, it's been a bit. It's been a bit of time for that. There is February 24th is when that drops. We have Octopath Traveler 2 sequel to Octopath Traveler, and I believe that one was pretty popular. That one came out three, four years ago. A lot I'm of people sure, are excited yeah. about it. Little platformer indie dev kind of looking game worth checking out if you're interested in the newer games uh that's on pc playstation 4 or 5 and switch so no xbox and february 24th is when that launches we have a dlc pack for destiny 2 lightfall which we've talked about like what three or four times on the yeah. show so far this year you know, but destiny does their expansions they do a big so <laughs> yeah, they really do um february 28th that's coming out yeah we talked about lightfall in the last episode when the destiny servers went down yeah i like how lightfall like, uh, soon and the servers are just busted so <laughs> yeah yep 
Uh, and then the last one we got going on is Scars Above. That's on the PC, PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox Series X, and S, February 28th. So we got a handful of games dropping the last week of February. Definitely worth checking out a lot of them. I would recommend researching all of them. I think True. the ones I'm most excited for are probably Atomic Heart oh, and yeah. Hogwarts Legacy. I want to see what that's going to be about. I was going to say the same, honestly. Those the two big ones. I mean, I'm curious to see how Lifehold does, too, even though I don't really play Destiny, so... <laughs> Still uh, curious to hear how it is. So. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So I think that pretty much wraps up the uh, the episode for this week, breaking down the video games for February. And I felt like we kind of just went right through all the articles. It's kind of a bummer, though, man, that these articles were... I mean, it's not good the way the gaming industry is looking right now. It's we not. Esport, it's like eSport orgs are losing their money. Um, they're having to lay off people. A couple of them have already like gone belly up. We got major AAA studios and developer publishers just laying off people now. Games are getting canceled left and right. I thought this year was going to be our year, man. We got <laughs> we got Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox pulling out of E3. What is going on? That's going to be it. I don't know. I'm, I'm still a firm believer. Twenty four, twenty five is going to be like the fuck. It's, it's going to be pop. Like... Yeah. Oh, it's gonna pop. be the banger, Ed. But I'm not down. I'm still up. I'm I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the remainder of the month to see what happens, and really looking forward to the summer because you know there's just some sleepers out there. We oh, haven't had yeah. we haven't had a monster game come out in a bit. We've had Elden Ring drop, but it's like Elden Ring wasn't like really anticipated, was it? Yeah, you know. Oh, really? It's dude. Like we got start. Is Starfield gonna pop? Maybe. Dude, could you imagine a Starfield summer release? Oh my gosh, dude. Insane. <laughs> uh, dude, that'd be the game of the summer right there. Calling it. It's probably going to be a fall release. I'll try not to say my... I'll try not to say that. I'm thinking I would love a summer release that would be like it, you know? But I know most games probably aren't looking to release in the summer window because, you know, not many people are, you know, as indoors as they are during the other month. You know, during the other season, so that's a good point. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Usually, the best games launch in the fall. That like Thanksgiving era, like area. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing how everything plays out for the remainder of the month. Hopefully, we get a rebound next week. Get some better articles that aren't such a downer, man. True. I hate I hate to see games basically getting gutted and then Stinks, funding gone dude. and. Nice, whatever. We gotta go. We gotta go. Shout out some love though. We gotta go take a look at Rumbleverse while we still can. Maybe yeah. download some Apex Legends mobile. Figure out why that game is getting canceled. Maybe there's a reason. Uh, <laughs> Could be a blatant, you know. blatantly obvious reason. We don't know. So, <laughs> yes, sir. Well, what do you say we let the people go? I think so. Sound good? I think oh yeah. So. By the way, we gotta tell people to follow the Twitter, man. True. Follow the Twitter. We got a Twitter I account, know. M2 Podcast, and M2 underscore podcast. Please follow. Check it out. It's where we um, post in from now on about the show. From now on. Let's go. And all the links, descriptions below. We also have a Discord. Feel free to join that. And uh yeah. Pretty much it. Got anything for him, Kyle? Or we let him go. I think that's it. I'm gonna remember something probably right after, but I don't just, just let's end it, dude. Let's get him out. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you later. Peace out. Bye, everyone. Peace. Sorry.